it's time to talk a little bit about women's historical participation in sport. Of course, females in the 19th century were unable to participate in as many sports as males due to the social barriers that existed at the time. And it's important to think about this question. How did women's and men's sports participation differ in the 19th century? And why did it differ? And firstly, we'll talk a little bit about the Victorian era between 1837 and 1901. Women were expected to be pale, fragile and feminine. They were expected to be sedentary, which is they were expected to not move very much. The ultimate role of, of a female at the time was to be motherly and decorative, and sport was considered harmful to the female anatomy. And so lack of participation was due to the Victorian social standards, and male-dominated sports clubs had membership rules, and women were simply not allowed to be members. At the time, women's sport was trivialised by the male population, and the fashions of the day were very restrictive, Medical professionals' views at the time were that overexertion was considered harmful to the female body and the reproductive system, so they should avoid being active. At the time, there was very limited media recognition, and there were limitations placed on female capabilities. Women just were not expected to be as athletic as males. And of course, sex role socialisation existed, where the male was expected to be the provider and the female was expected to be the nurturer and the carer. Pierre de Coubertin was the founder of the modern Olympics, and for him, the Games were the solemn and periodic exaltation of male athleticism, so a celebration of male athleticism, with the applause of women as a reward. He went on to say that if a woman wishes to pilot an airplane, no policeman has a right to stop her, but when it comes to public sports sports competitions, women's participation should be absolutely prohibited. And this was the, the founder of the modern Olympics. So you can clearly see that the Olympics in the 19th century were not something that women were expected to be a part of. He also went on to say that women could not physically rival men and therefore they could not push sport faster, higher, stronger, which were the core ideals of the modern Olympics. He also failed to see the appeal of women's events running alongside men's events at the Games. Women at the Olympics has had a very turbulent time, particularly in the 19th century and early 1900s. Women did compete at the Paris Olympic Games in 1900 in the sports of tennis, golf and croquet. However, it wasn't until 1912 that women were able to, to swim at the Olympic Games and fencing in 1924, but still were unable to participate in track and field. Australia's first female swimming gold medal came from Sarah Fanny Girac, who won the 100 metre freestyle in 1912. In 1922, Frenchwoman Alice Milliat organised the first Women's World Games in 1922. This was a one day event in Paris, and large crowds attended to see women participate in a range of Olympic events. The Women's World Games continued in 1926, four years later, where 10 nations were involved, and this took place in Sweden. Following this, the International Amateur Athletic Federation were finally forced to take notice of women who wanted to participate in Olympic competition. Milliat had to drop the Olympic tag in exchange for 10 events at the next Olympics in Amsterdam, in 1928. Amsterdam was the first Olympic Games where women were able to compete in track and field events. However, this was a controversial race as five women collapsed at the end of the 800 metres. Women were then banned from running the 800 metres until 1960. And so this event led to further debate in favour of banning women from strenuous events at the Olympic Games. In Rome in 1960, women participated in the 800 metre run again. And following that, in 1984, women were allowed to participate in shooting. 
and Atlanta in 1996, softball was added to the Olympic Games in which Australia were able to win a bronze medal. In Sydney 2000, women's weightlifting was added. And in London 2012, women's boxing was added to the program. There are two female-only sports in the Olympic Games, and they are rhythmic gymnastics and synchronised swimming. Going back to the original question, why has increased female participation occurred in sport over time? And the women's suffrage movement in the 1900s, or the right to vote, led to increased power and respect for women. This was followed by the feminist movement of the late 1960s and 70s. And this brought different or differing social expectations and female capabilities were acknowledged and led to greater independence. Over the years, uh, females have been able to experience far more uh, equal opportunities when it comes to sport. There's certainly been a realisation of the benefits of sport and physical activity for everybody, including females. And the concept of equality has led to changed expectations over time to female roles, both, both in society and in sport. We've also seen realistic views about the body and capabilities based on facts as opposed to ideology. And there's also been great achievements of female athletes over time that have inspired a generation. And really, these female athletes have been pioneers for women that have followed so Shirley Strickland is an example, Margaret Court, Dawn Fraser, Betty Cuthbert, and of course, Kathy Freeman, amongst many others over the years. And, and it's time to think about this key question, compare the nature of sport in the 19th century with sport in today's society. And you need to be able to think back to those key concepts from the beginning, the idea of manliness, patriotism and character, the definitions of amateur and professionalism, and of course the historical participation of women in sport. How, has, how have these concepts evolved and changed over time? And what is sport like in today's society? And you need to think about sport in the 19th century as largely a male pursuit. Um, and we saw different types of sports in those days and we've seen sports evolve with the very strong links to Britain and we also saw the social classes being brought into into sport and sport being a way of separating or segregating the social classes with the amateur and professional and of course the development of professional sport over time how has this evolved and finally female athletes over time have certainly made a greater contribution today and have got greater opportunity to participate in sport today.